Hi, I'm Alex McCrickard, and I'm coming to you today from the beautiful Powhatan Lakes here at our Powhatan Wildlife Management Area for an update for the month of May in Virginia. In this month's report, I'm going to announce a new state record fish in addition to a new angler challenge that we plan to launch this year. Additionally, we're going to hear from Jonathan Harris, DWR fisheries biologist, who's going to highlight the variety of fisheries here at Powhatan Wildlife Management Area. Finally, we're going to cover some basic introductory rigs and techniques for beginner anglers to have success out on the water. With free fishing days coming up the first weekend in June, it's the perfect opportunity to take somebody fishing who's never fished before. Let me take a brief moment though to congratulate lucky angler Josh Dolan on catching the new state record fall fish. Josh landed this trophy 19 and a half inch fall fish that weighed three pounds, nine and a half ounces out of the Cow Pasture River on May 6, 2022. This fish is not only the new state record fall fish in Virginia, but ties the IGFA All Tackle World Record Fall Fish. Congratulations on an amazing catch, Josh. I'm excited to announce that the Department of Wildlife Resources is launching a new angler challenge this year called the Bass Slam. Our trout slam is so popular, we wanted to launch a bass slam. Anglers are gonna have one year to catch smallmouth bass, a largemouth bass, and either a hybrid striped bass or a striped bass. Three bass count towards the slam. You've got one year to do it. Stay tuned for an email coming soon with additional details about this unique angler challenge. Welcome to Powhatan Wildlife Management Area. Let's talk a little bit about this WMA and the unique fishing opportunities that are here. Powhatan Wildlife Management Area is a 4,462-acre WMA in Powhatan County, Virginia. Only 25 miles west of Richmond and conveniently reached from US Route 60, this WMA provides a haven for outdoor enthusiasts near expanding metropolitan areas. For anglers, there are four ponds and two small lakes in the area. The lakes are 32 and 26 acres, and they're located in the northern portion of the WMA. Let's check in with Jonathan Harris to tell us a little bit about the fishery here at Powhatan. The Powhatan Wildlife Management Area has two lakes and four ponds that have typical warm water fish communities. These communities include largemouth bass, bluegill, red ear sunfish, and we also stock channel catfish annually as an additional fishery. The two larger lakes on our northern section of the management area have boat landings and are more geared to our advanced angler that are fishing from boats and generally are targeting big largemouth bass. We have numerous fish in the 15 to 18 inch range in the lake and even some over 20 inches. The four smaller ponds are geared to our beginner angler with a lot of shoreline access and smaller bass and sunfish to catch. Wherever you fish on the Powhatan WMA, you will catch fish and you're sure to have a great time. We hope to see you on the water. What's extra special about today's fishing report is that we're going to be joined by Megan Marchetti, media specialist for the agency. And Megan is actually usually behind the camera and behind the scenes filming and editing these fishing reports. We're actually going to get her out on the water today. As a beginner angler, we're going to go through some basic tactics and techniques to try to put her on some fish. What? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> All right. One of my goals as the agency's aquatic education coordinator is to build a diverse angling community with underlying values of conservation and stewardship. And one of the best ways to accomplish this is by connecting new people to the sport of fishing. I look right doing it. Yep, filming. <laughs> Gonna have to edit that out. <laughs> catch Alex little bluegill out here very common uh, warm water fish um, to catch out here one thing about the bluegill if you look at their dorsal fin they have spines that give way to soft rays and there's always gonna be a little black dot there towards the uh, the the back part of the dorsal fin which is one of the telltale characteristics they also have black vertical bars that extend from the dorsal side of the fish to the uh, ventral side of the fish let this little bluegill go. I'm moving a few fish off this flat here. We've got some uh, lily pad edges along the edge and then some woody debris coming out here. And we'll see if we can't find a crappy or a readier sunfish. I've been kind of just flipping some casts in over here.
pretty reddier sunfish out here on Powhatan Lakes. Red wigglers are what they're eating today. Pop that, reverse that hook out the opposite way it went in. Send this fish home. The techniques that we've been using today to catch a few fish out here on Powhatan Lakes are really great for beginner anglers or novice anglers. This is a six and a half foot medium action rod and I've got a closed faced push button reel which is easy for casting for beginners and this is rigged with six pound monofilament line. Um, we've been using a rig called the floater rig today. Um, a lot of times I just call it a hook bobber and sinker and it's one of the best ways for getting beginner anglers on some of their first fish. I'll show you how we set this up. Um, I've got a bait holder hook here that I'm using. It's a size eight. Um, I tie that on first with either an improved clinch knot or a palomar knot, whichever one you prefer. Um, I'm going to attach a bobber here that is, is going to ultimately uh, detect my strikes for me. And then I'm going to attach a reusable split shot. This is a four aught and uh, I'm going to put that about six to eight inches above the hook. And I'm going to be able to fish this rig around woody debris um, or uh, up against the bank. So when I'm attaching these bobbers, basically I've already tied my hook on. I'm going to set this up about two and a half feet above my hook because I know I'm going to fish in about three and a half feet of water. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going to pop this top off here. And you can see when I pop that top down, there's a hook that I can then attach my line to. And then ultimately there's a, one more hook on the underside that I'm going to pop out and attach the monofilament line to it. You always want um, the uh, white part of the bobber facing up, the red part facing down. So you don't want to put this on backwards. So now I've got a bobber on and I've got a hook. It's time to put a split shot on. So what I like having is a, a pair of needle nose pliers and I'll put this split shot about um, uh, 12 inches above my hook. And each split shot has a little slit in there that you can weave the monofilament through and a pair of needle nose pliers will just pinch that down nice and evenly for you. Now it's time to bait my hook. So what we've been using today is red wigglers. You can use night crawlers if you want, but some of the smaller fish that we've been fishing for today, you don't want to put an entire uh, worm on a hook. Um, basically, you'll just end up having fish steal your worm the whole time. So using a smaller piece of a, a red wiggler, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave this red wiggler onto the hook so that I know when a fish takes it, it's going to have to get the entire hook in its mouth to really make that meal worthwhile for them. And so at this point, I'm now ready to cast and I'm going to fish this rig off the bank um, on flats. I can target structure like uh, down woody trees, um, emergent vegetation, and basically any time that this bobber starts to tick or go down, that's an indication that I've got a bite. I'm going to set the hook by sweeping that rod up over my shoulder and then it's game on, fish on. So now that we've gone over the floater rig, I want to go over just some basic mechanics of the cast really quickly. This is a closed-faced push-button reel. The first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to push that button in. That's going to deactivate the drag system and basically engage the cast. Um, when I'm casting a rod, it's really a motion between 2 o'clock and 10 o'clock. So if you think about the face of a clock, your hat being about noon, 2 o'clock being about here and 10 o'clock being about here, I'm going to pick my rod up over my shoulder. I'm going to stop at 2 o'clock and it's going to be a sweeping motion with my rod forward. When I get to 10 o'clock, I'm going to let go of that button and the momentum of my arm moving forward is going to cast that, that uh, rig out in the direction that I'm facing the rod. So it'll look just like this, get to 10 o'clock, let go of that line, let go of that button, and now I'm out there. And then the first thing I want to do is pick up that cast and I'm going to kind of engage that drag system. Now I'm ready to, uh, ready to fish. Set, 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 set the hook. Reel, 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 rod tip up. Yeah, you got a nice one on. Keep reeling, keep reeling. Nice, you got a catfish. Bring him in. Bring him in. All right, we got another species that Megan was able to catch um, on the red wiggler. This time a little channel catfish. These are fish that we stock out here. Channel catfish will have a rounded anal fin, and then these smaller juvenile fish will have peppered black spots down across their sides, like this fish is displaying here. Um, catfish have spines on their dorsal fin, 
and their pectoral fins. So you need to be kind of cognizant of that when you're holding these fish. You can see I'm, I'm cradling this fish. I've got his do, uh, pectoral fins between my index finger and my middle finger here. And I'm kind of straddling that spine like that. Um, and another thing that's important to keep in mind too with these fish is they've got that spine on their dorsal fin as well. So you just wouldn't want to grab the fish like that or like this. You want to just kind of cradle those uh, fins between your uh, fingers. Catfish um, have barbels. A lot of times people think these are whiskers. They're called barbels in the fisheries world. And these barbels, um, each barbel has thousands of tiny taste buds. It's an old factory sensory organ that the catfish uses to seek out food down along the bottom. So pretty catfish here and we'll send them home. Just caught this beautiful black crappie over there off of the lily pads. Used a um, a uh, earthworm and a bobber, and this is beautiful out here on Powhatan W. May. We're gonna release this beautiful fish. There you go, buddy. There you go. Hi there, I'm Megan Marchetti and I'm a media specialist for the Department of Wildlife Resources and Alex McCrackard, our um, angling education coordinator, took me out today. Usually I'm behind the camera. Um, I did catch some fish today, really exciting. Um, you know, Virginia has some beautiful locations and our WMAs are just proof in the pudding. You can come out here and enjoy a day on the water with friends. So Megan, what'd you think of today? You caught four different species of fish. I was really impressed with Powhatan WMA. Um, what a beautiful place. What God. a beautiful place. It was nice to get a rod and a reel in my hand, and it was a real confidence boost. I've considered myself a beginner angler. Sure. I haven't been out in a couple years, but you had an easy setup for me, very simple, and it was really fun. So now I feel like I can take, you know, my stepson or a family awesome. member out and enjoy the water. Yeah, it was really fun to get you out from the other side of the camera fishing. Um, a lot of fun and just those fundamentals can get beginner anglers on some fish at a place like Powhatan Wildlife Management Area. Great opportunity. And we have free fishing days coming up. It's yeah. the first weekend in June, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, anybody can fish in Virginia without a license. All rules and regulations still apply, but it's really a great opportunity to take somebody out that's never fished before or somebody that hasn't fished in many years back out on the water, reconnect them with the resource um, and, and get them out fishing. And remember, the outdoors are better together. Is that good? That sounded awesome. <laughs> I think we I think we absolutely crushed that one. <laughs>